is New Day Northwest. Now from the Premiera Blue Cross Studio, here's Margaret Larson. Good morning. Welcome to New Day Northwest. We start in the kitchen as we like to with Chef Antimo Chimino, who's going to show us how to make homemade biscotti today. Darcy Camden is backstage with the models. She started checking out how do you wear stuff that's comfy and beautiful if you're going on vacation, you're just trying to travel. But first up today, some music. First up, our multi-talented fiddler and violinist who seamlessly blends Americana, jazz, Celtic, and classical elements. Jeremy Kittle is currently on tour with a trio to promote their newest album, Whorls, out shortly. They perform at the Triple Door in Seattle tonight, but they are first on New Day. Kittle and Co., welcome. <laughs> Jeremy. All right. Come join me. That was spectacular. I've been listening to you guys warm up this morning and it's been beautiful. It's good to meet you. Good Come meet have you a seat. Too. Thank you so much. So um, introduce us to your bandmates. Don't go away Absolutely. quite yet. Yeah, yeah. So Josh Pinkham, my buddy Josh over there on Mandolin, he's been called the future of the mandolin. Yay. At Mandolin Magazine. <laughs> I love it. Quinn Bashan on guitar, actually from close to here, from uh, Victoria, Canada. Oh, that's awesome. Is, uh, has been called uh, Canada's top Celtic guitarist by Ashley McIsaac, well-known Canadian fiddler. So well, we're blessed to have you here this morning. Wonderful guys. 
Yeah. yeah, very cool. You do all sorts of things, but let's talk first of all about the distinction between being a violinist and a fiddler. You say you're both. Sure, yeah. I mean, this instrument has really traveled through cultures for so long that people have adopted it throughout the world. And one of the things that I love uh, is really getting into different styles of music that the instrument really thrives with. Anything from Celtic music, we were just playing mm -hmm. kind of a more Irish tune to uh, classical and uh, jazz as well, and all sorts of different music over the years and the centuries, really, that it's been part of. So what we do is kind of uh, hopefully a natural meld with our own music of these different styles. Right. So how did you learn about all of these different bits of music that come from what we would think of as, as almost um, opposing types of music that are brought together? Sure. I mean, I think it really comes down to immersion. So getting into a certain community and really living and like learning and hanging out and playing music for years with that community. Uh, and it's, that's been one of the joys of my life, you know, so far has been to really connect with different communities of music and to be able to write music as well. There's something so emotional about a violin or a fiddle yeah. that you know really carries through no matter what kind of music that you're doing. You've done some composing for films as well? That's right, yeah. Some different composing for films as well as uh, for a lot of different bands and uh, vocal like rock ensembles and uh, popular music, classical ensembles, uh, Yo-Yo Ma, uh, My Morning Jacket, also as a string player, viola player with mm -hmm. groups like Fleet Foxes and uh, many others, so it's really cool to be able to bring some of the things I learned with that into this group as well. Right. Well, actually, as you were playing, I was sort of imagining frolicking in the hay fields. Yeah. There was something going on. I saw you over there <laughs> Visually, kind, yeah. of, kind of going along with the music. Tell us about the new album. The new album is out actually on this upcoming Friday, and it's uh, called Whorls, mm -hmm. like the natural whorls you'd find in a plant or in a fingerprint. Right. It's out on Compass Records. Uh, it features the three of us as well as two more string players, uh, our friend Sarah DeRose on guest vocals on one track, and we're just so excited to share it with the world. How long did you work on it? A few years, yeah, with writing the music and then rehearsing, and we played it live for a while, yep. and then we recorded it at this beautiful church out in Massachusetts. Oh, really? And after that, we had all this music to kind of sift through and figure out what we wanted to use. Now, when you were in the church, did you use the natural acoustics of the church as Absolutely. part of the recording? Absolutely, so you can hear the rafters, you know, the, all the reverb, because really these instruments sound so good in a wonderful space, and so that's what we wanted to capture. That's really interesting. David Byrne gave a talk about yeah. that, about how music was affected, um, the way it developed in different parts of the world by how it was played. Was it outdoors? Was it in big spaces like Absolutely. churches and cathedrals? Right. So I can just imagine the, the good sound there. So what's next for you after this? We're going to Nashville after the show tonight. We're hopping Ooh. on a flight, and we're playing there tomorrow night, and then we're going to tomorrow New York. Tomorrow night? <laughs> we're playing there tomorrow night, yeah, I know. going to be tired. <laughs> a and then bit. New York? Uh, New York on Saturday night, and then on from there, all around the East Coast, Midwest, back to the South, etc. Terrific. Good luck yeah. to you. That Thank was really great. Thank you so much, Margaret. I'll give you my not There we go. Fiddle hand. I thought maybe you were yeah. going to fiddle for me there for a second. You can if you want to. Okay. <laughs> I appreciate it. Again, Kittle & Co. performs tonight at Triple Door in Seattle. Details are linked on our website, but go see them just this one night. Still ahead, a Snoqualmie Valley Cafe, a nonprofit, helping struggling teenagers just got a huge boost from National Do-Gooder Mike Rowe. We're going to reveal what it was after this.